What is aperture? How do you set the ISO? What's shutter speed, exposure? I have no clue, but let's work it out together. Hey everybody, welcome to the Movavi Vlog, your go-to channel for creating cool videos. I'm Connor, your host. I'm glad you guys are here to hang and learn some things right beside me. Today we're gonna figure out what is what when it comes to manual settings, and we'll figure out how to shoot like a pro. It's way easier to explain how most of these settings work in relation to photos. But don't freak out because photo and video are directly related. After all, a video is just a long string of photos. We briefly explained this topic in our video on shooting with a smartphone, but in this video we're gonna lay all of our cards out on the table. We'll roughly divide this episode into two parts. The first being a bit of theory. That's not true at all, there's gonna be tons of theory. And then we'll provide some specific examples. Just so you know, there are gonna be time codes in the description. Open up your mind, get those synapses zapping, and then grab a pen and paper because we're about to learn a lot of awesome things today. Let's deal with camera components. There are two key elements here. The first being the lens, or as some people like to call it, the glass. Then you have the camera itself, which a lot of people just call the body. But I do like to call it the uh, photo machine or uh, memory maker, but I don't think those are gonna catch on anytime soon. The most important part of a camera lens is actually the lens itself, where in the camera body, it's the image sensor. That's this shiny little rectangle in here. Under no circumstance should you ever put your finger on it, or breathe on it, or leave it open for too long, like we're currently doing right now. This kills the camera. An image sensor is to digital cameras what photographic film is to film cameras. It captures the information of the light that hits it and translates that into the final picture. Whenever you press the shutter button, light travels through the lens onto the image sensor and forms an image. This image sensor then digitizes that information and turns it into a photo or a video. Even if you're shooting with an old camera phone, like this one, it's gonna have all the exact same elements, except they're going to be a lot smaller and more compact. So let's move over to the manual settings. You're gonna have three parameters on any camera. Aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. These three parameters all affect each other to create the exposure level, which is the amount of light that is exposed to the image sensor. To put it simply, it's how light the picture is gonna be, but it's not just that. So let's go through these three parameters one by one. Aperture, it's an optical parameter that relates specifically to the lens. Aperture determines how wide or narrow the opening of the diaphragm is. It also allows you to control how much light passes through the lens. A lot of experts like to call the diaphragm the photo square window, or the window of opportunity, or even the eye of Sauron. N nobody actually really does. What they do call the diaphragm is the iris. So what are the advantages of adjusting the aperture? The first would be to regulate how much light passes through the lens. And the second is to create a blurry background. When you say that the aperture is more narrow, it means that this iris is a lot smaller so there is less light which enters the image sensor. This parameter takes form in ratios, but if this is already a lot of information and you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, just try to remember these two things. The lower the number is in your settings, the wider your diaphragm is gonna be. And the higher the number is in your settings, the more narrow your diaphragm is gonna be. In our case, 1.8 is the largest aperture width. There's a lot of light and the picture is bright. The smallest aperture width we have is 22. Hardly anything is visible in the frame. Now an explanation on creating a blurry background. The part that's in focus is called the depth of field, or DOF. You don't really save any time saying DOF, but you do sound really cool, so that's a plus. Let me give you an example of what depth of field is. Here I'm shooting with a 50 millimeter lens at the maximum aperture value, which is 1.8. In this shot, Krusty the Clown is visible and in focus, while the foreground and background are blurred. And now I'm turning the focus ring, do you see that? As if there's a thin area running across the frame, the objects in that area get sharp and clear. The size of this area itself is called the depth of field. And now the depth of field is tiny. Cool. Ooh, that's kind of small. 
Now, let me narrow down the aperture so you can see that. Perfect, this area got wider and more objects are now in focus, which means that the depth of field increased. That's quite big. Impressive. To sum it up, a wide diaphragm is often used in darker situations or if you want to create an artistic effect through blurry backgrounds. A narrow or small diaphragm are used if there's too much light in the scene or if you want to keep more things in focus. In order to avoid things falling in and out of focus, you can increase your depth of field. Let's move on to shutter speed. But before we start talking about the videography aspect of shutter speed, let's talk about the photography aspect because it'll be a lot easier to understand. Shutter speed is the amount of time it allows the image sensor to record the information of the light that reaches it. This is measured in seconds or more often than not fractions of seconds. Remembering the function of shutter speed is actually gonna be pretty easy for you. So the more active your content is, the shorter shutter speed you'll need. Also rhymes, the shorter shutter speed you'll need. Otherwise, everything within the frame is gonna look pretty blurry. So let's turn to our examples real quick. Here you can see me tired of sitting and recording the vlog on the beanbag chair. So I went to go stretch and just hang out for a little while. Let's take a look at some of these photos with various shutter speeds. The shorter the shutter speed is, the clearer the image is on the photos. The camera literally seizes one particular moment, yet the shots get darker as less light reaches the image sensor in a short period of time. With a long shutter speed, you can take these stunning night photos within a few seconds. The lighting is poor, but since the image sensor records information within a few seconds, the total amount of light becomes sufficient for a cool picture. The same works with video. Remember all the stuff we said on FPS in our slow motion video? If you don't, here's the little link, boop, right there. For instance, if you're shooting a video at a frequency of 30 frames per second, then in one second of video, you're going to have 30 photos. Therefore, it's impossible to shoot at a shutter speed bigger than 1 30th of a second. So if you want to shoot a slow motion video at, let's say, 120 frames per second, then your shutter speed cannot be larger than 1 120th of a second but make sure that that scene is light in comparison to say if you're shooting at 30 frames per second. That's all just theory though. What about the practical applications? This video is shot at 30 FPS and the shutter speed is 1 30th of a second. As you can see in the freeze frame, my hand looks really blurry. Shutter speed like this will be suitable for a vlog, an interview, or to stream your Twitch to all your followers or, in my case, to stream your Twitch to both of your followers. <laughs> Besides, the shutter speed will work in low light conditions. Here, the shutter speed is 1 50th of a second. The movements aren't that blurry and the image looks clear. That's perfectly fine for dynamic videos. And also, with the shutter speed of 1 50th of a second, you'll have no flickering of artificial lamps if you're in Europe, like this. It's all linked to the frequency of the light source. In Europe, the standard is 50 Hz, while in the US, it's 60 Hz. To avoid flickering, shutter speed should be multiples of these values. Don't get too enthusiastic just yet. If you set the shutter speed too low, 1 400th of a second, for example, then the image will look really jumpy and unnatural um, because it's lacking a lot of the motion blur, which our eyes are really used to. Last but not least, we have ISO. A higher ISO level is gonna make an image lighter by forcing the image sensor to be more sensitive to light. Neither the depth of field nor the shutter speed will change. Pretty easy, right? But there is a catch, and there always is a catch, right? As light sensitivity in the image starts increasing, image noise starts to increase. These are really obnoxious dots that are obvious defects. Old camera phones started creating image noise at the value of about 400. Amateur Canon cameras such as the 60D do it at 800. And an expensive Sony like the A7S II can massively enhance this value without spoiling images. It's pretty cool, it's like night vision goggles for your camera without having to buy night vision goggles for your camera. All in all, the lower the ISO, the better. Well then, your theory is good, but as always, practice makes perfect. 
so let's try out a few of these scenes together. Here I am shooting breathtaking snowy woods. Feels so good now. So I want to have this artist footage with this blurry background, which means I'll have to widen the aperture as much as possible. Okay, and what do we have now? A whole lot of nothing. It's nothing but overexposure all across the screen. So let us reduce ISO to the minimum value. It's getting better already. Now let's make the shutter speed lower. Let's set it at a value of 100. If we went lower than this, at some point it would display an unwanted strobe effect. Alright, but it's still too bright, so we'll have to sacrifice our artistry for practicality and close the aperture just a little bit. Sweet, we got rid of that intense light. Alright, here's another example. If I want to interview Roman, I'm going to set him down over here while I set my camera up over here. Roman might be moving a tad throughout the interview, so we decided to lower the aperture to widen out the depth of field so that he can move freely without the fear of falling in and out of focus. Okay, it's looking pretty dark right now, but let's raise that shutter speed to 1 50th of a second. It's looking a lot better. And in this case, you don't really have to avoid artificial light. All right, is it still looking dark? Because if it is, you can raise the ISO, but you don't want to raise it too much because then it'll add a lot of noise to the video that you don't really want. Especially for you, we created a cheat sheet so you can save it as a reference point if you ever feel stuck down the road. The link is going to be in the description down below. Check it out in the description. If you've got some questions left over still, you can ask them in the comment section and someone from our team is sure to reply to you. Thank you for calling. Unfortunately, all our agents are unavailable. Please hold and we will answer your comment in the order it was received. Now that you're fully prepared, you can watch our video on shooting with a smartphone so that you can excel in shooting on literally anything. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and like the video as well. See ya.